um, then I would like a microphone here. I assume it's it's on. Okay. Hello, uh, and I would like to welcome uh, all of you for today's roundtable, um, but also our side event under the World Food Summit held in uh, Copenhagen um, with today's title, How Can Digitalization and Green Transition Support the Reduction of Food Loss and Waste? Welcome here to the Royal Danish Embassy's residence and um, here in Poland, where our event today will take place. And welcome to our presenters sitting at the various tables and our panelist uh, participants. Um, and um, as we just heard, it is a live streamed event. Uh, so whether it is morning, afternoon or evening, welcome to all of you who attend this event online. I will now pass the floor to uh, His Excellency uh, Ole Toft, Ambassador of Denmark to Poland. The floor is yours, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Jeven. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me uh, today to welcome you all uh, here to uh, this uh, Danish-Polish side event under the World Food Summit. At the embassy, we have been looking forward uh, to arrange and organize uh, this meeting. And I'm happy that we can have so many uh, distinguished uh, guests, both from Poland and uh, from Denmark, present here uh, today. As Jeppe said, uh, this roundtable uh, is taking place here at the residence of the Danish embassy in, in Warsaw. But it is also uh, a, a, very, a very virtual event with the hundreds of people uh, all over the world uh, following uh, our meeting. And also welcome to you. Uh, and let me finally also welcome and thank uh, all our speakers uh, here today uh, and the panelists uh, sitting uh, at the round table. Thank you very much and welcome. There are many, many lessons to be learned uh, from the past year's uh, dramatic events. First, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. For the first time in a century, the world was hit by such a pandemic. And now we are facing this terrible war in the Ukraine, uh, something that we haven't seen in our part of the world since the Second World War. This war, I think I cannot uh, mention the war without uh, being present here in Poland also to express my sincere thanks and my uh, admiration for the Polish people, Polish society, Polish government, Polish civil society in the way that Poland have uh, uh, acted and have shown solidarity and leadership in this difficult situation. But no po country can deal with the uh, challenges of our time and our world uh, alone. And also when we look at the war in Ukraine, uh, it is. It will not only affect us in, in Europe, but most likely uh, the war will also have serious implications for the world food supply in the coming years. And the uh, cooperation, multilateral cooperation, international cooperation, and for us in Europe also cooperation within the European Union is definitely part of the answer to these challenges. The United Nations is a pillar uh, in the global multilateral architecture and the UN Sustainable Development Goals, they are our common blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for us all. The objectives of the EU's farm to fork strategy and policy is also an important tool uh, to support the global transition to sustainable agri-food systems in line with the SDGs. We need robust and resilient food systems that functions in all circumstances capable of ensuring access to a sufficient supply of affordable and healthy food for all people. 
Here today, we will in particular focus on the sustainable development goal number 12.3, which is addressing global food uh, loss and waste. And I hope that the, the annual uh, World Food Summits can be an accelerator of uh, the important work in this area. Better food for more people, that is the World Food Summit subtitle, and that sums it up very well. We have to produce and consume smarter, respecting our limited natural resources and the challenges of a growing world population. Let me remind you that a third of all food for human consumption is lost or wasted on a global scale. A third of all food. And speaking of thirds, around one third of all greenhouse gas emissions globally comes from agriculture. So if we, as a planet, stopped wasting food altogether, we would eliminate 8% of our total carbon emissions. That's quite a lot. I hope Denmark and Poland can work together on this fundamental issue and this great challenge. Today we have here gathered a group of people uh, that form, I think, a very fine platform uh, for discussing, working and sharing uh, ideas and experiences uh, in this field. Danish experience, Polish experience, Danish visions, Polish visions, Danish hopes, Polish hopes. We are quite close to each other in this field, but at the same time, we have a lot to learn from each other and a lot of uh, experience to share. We have here today with us representatives from governmental institutions, from the university sector, and from private companies. In Denmark, we call this the Danish model, bringing these three groups together to develop and strengthen our society. I'm sure that we can learn much more today uh, about all these things uh, and that uh, we can all leave today a little bit uh, wiser and uh, hopefully also uh, a little bit more inspired than uh, before. Thank you very much, all of you, for being here with us today. And I uh, wish you all and also our listeners uh, abroad uh, uh, an inspiring and successful roundtable here today. Thank you very much. And then please, Jeppe, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for conveying uh, these uh, important messages. Um, I have to say it is my sincere pleasure to, uh, to welcome and have the opportunity for giving these opening remarks today because uh, I'm personally deeply attached to the agenda of food loss and food waste. I think it's a highly important agenda. Um, today's event is our first initiative of uh, establishing an alliance uh, on sustainable and resource efficient uh, food production and agricultural production. Um, because to have sustainable food systems uh, or means reducing food loss and food waste. Uh, and it's something that have become crucial over the last years. Um, and here shortening the supply chain is important when it comes to preventing food loss and food waste. And a digitalized and greener production is something that can help um, to support this. The EU's farm to fork uh, strategy aspires to promote not only sustainable food systems, but also new ways to connect. That is why we are here today. Uh, new informational flows, educational actions to ensure safety and availability of food within all societies. This is done also in the context of EU in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 12.3. My hope is that we today can strengthen our collaboration and partnerships um, between Denmark and Poland um, 
And the knowledge that we bring forward today um, is done by experts, companies, who will present some of their knowledge and best practice. We have, as you have seen on the agenda today, a quite tight program. Uh, so we are doing our best to be disciplined. Um, um, but it's because we have a long list of distinguished speakers and uh, they are eager to share their insight in today's topic. In addition to that, here at our tables, we have uh, a group of panelists who are uh, have the opportunity to ask questions and supplement with their organizational perspective to the various presentations. After each presentation, we will open the floor for a short question and um, amongst our panelists. And uh, hereafter, we will have the first five uh, presentations, and then we will have a Q&A session where we will open the floor for a more in-depth discussion. Um, hereafter, we will proceed with four presentations with a small question after each presentation to be followed with 10 minutes of uh, Q&A afterwards. I will now give the floor to uh, uh, Dr. Christian Sipanski, who is the director of the Institute of Environmental Protection, National Research Institute. He will deliver some key messages on uh, Poland's approach on measuring and handling food waste. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, can I please my presentation? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for invitation here in this event, very important uh, issue, very important areas that uh, I would like to present today the, our result, our project about the scale of food loss and waste in Poland, because we would like to evaluate that the start <coughs> point of the start, yes, that we need to eliminate, we need to reduce that the, the, this type of the, the waste, of course, each waste we have to reduce, but, but here is the very important because we have a different, uh, different problems, environmental, economical, and social, uh, social problems in this, in, this, in this area. First of all, I would like to, I would like to few words about our, um, my institution our knowledge and our we are the experts the, that some some issue first of all is air quality and the climate we collect the data about the emission uh, contamination emission in in in, in uh, uh, and impact of air quality waste management as well climate change uh, eco ecotoxical uh, ex, ecotoxicology environmental assessment uh, environmental education that it's our our uh, com com um, competences uh, in 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 our institute and the scale of the foods that we have a project that the whole the name is the developing a system for monitoring waste food and effective program to rationalize losses and reduce food waste and the the, the abbreviation is prom we finish uh, our project uh, uh, at the end of November, the last year, and the, 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 the main aims, the main goal is the strengthening public institution with regards to the management of public policy on reduced of food losses and waste and developing an action plan against food losses and, and waste. Some task strategy, the first of all, the second was the awareness rising campaign that it's uh, uh, guilty free, let's say that uh, in Poland that it's, yeah, it's better vejuto, but uh, it, uh, it guilty free, saving food for, uh, from going to the waste, uh, to waste and uh, procedure to donating food to, for social purpose. Our, our partners, one of the, our partners implemented in this uh, this task and this result, uh, we would like to estimate uh, of wasted food amounts in in the whole food chain, and we carry uh, carry carried out with uh, two different team research. First of all, our institute, and the second Warsaw 
University of Life Sciences. Uh, and uh, it was the first time in our in our country uh, to innovative uh, approach to, to this type of uh, evaluated uh, evaluated the, the waste. And uh, what the, the our analysis concerned uh, concerned the following links uh, like the primary production, the raw material processing, transport, storage, trade trade, catering, and householders. Uh, and uh, it's the biggest number, for example, and the, the, the good, good idea and the good, good background to our today discussion, the 4.8 million tons per year in Poland, we produced, or not that they produced, we, we losses of food, for example. It's, it's, the, it's the big one. Uh, and of course, we have to the... Uh, we have to the different uh, link of the chain, food chain, that's where is the biggest. The biggest is how house, households is the biggest part of uh, responsible for this, uh, these losses. Uh, and the, very briefly, some information about the different, uh, different areas, primary production, agriculture, that is in this area, uh, almost 750 thousand tons per year losses and how we do that that how we evaluate we almost 1,400 1, 1, farms uh, survey and uh, what is the, uh, the the biggest impact that the, the biggest losses we have are the fruits and vegetables over 64 percent and what is the main uh, main causes of losses? The plant production in the plant production because we have the divided plant production and the livestock production. That in the plant production we have the moisture, moisture pests, uh, me mechanical damage, uh, decay. The livestock production injure disease, stress, uh, in the adequate to transport technology and condition. The next area that the food processing. Uh, and we have that we have evaluate three different sectors like the baker, fish, meat, oil, dairy, uh, <clears throat> grains, fruits, and vegetables. And we have a, uh, in the pine uh, <clears throat> in the pine chart we have uh, we have uh, information who, who is the best and who is the most important. That the most important in the baker. We lose, for example, that maybe it's a good idea to explain each minute in Poland threw away to the bin uh, 184 breads each minute. That is the amazing, the, the, the same, the huge and the very good examples. And uh, the main uh, causes of, of losses are the hygiene and sanitation, technical failures and package, packaging damage that uh, it was evaluated by our expert. Transport and storage is a little bit small one, only the 30,000 tons per year. We would like, we, 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 we ask that 100, uh, 160 tra transport and storage companies and the, the biggest, uh, okay, the biggest, uh, the biggest fruits and vegetables and the, the meal production, the dairy production. The next one, the trade. We evaluate into different, three different types of the shops, the hypermarkets, the medium and large stories, and the small, small stories. And we have the results uh, that hold the trade in the year is over 330,000 tons per year. Gastronomy as well, we have uh, over uh, 56,000 tons per year, each object, uh, if, uh, evaluate over 100 kilos uh, each each week and that is the same very big and householders uh, households that we have almost three million tons per year in here in Poland that each uh, each uh, let's say flat household uh, every week threw away almost three kilograms uh, in the bin yes that is the and what is the biggest uh, problem and uh, what, what are the causes of food waste that the food decay expiration data exceeded too much food prepared uh, too much food uh, bought 
and has departures. Yes, that, that is the, the causes which uh, indicated by the, by the people. And of course, that we concentrate about the, what we can do and what we, we, we should to do. Of course, that the different type of the uh, different type, different task for different uh, areas. For example, that trainings, compliance with procedures, new technological solution, investment in equipment and machinery. That is the, maybe the good example is the diary production. Uh, when they invest a lot and the, the Polish uh, Polish plants is, uh, is very very uh, high development and they the, the, in the milk production uh, it's the, the the losses is very very small uh, redistribution as well of course the consumers building consumer awareness education activities and of course develop that uh, food sharing that is the one of the and maybe the digitalization will be helped and help now uh, to, to, to reduce the, the losses. And thank you for your in, uh, uh, attention. And uh, of course, we will be discussing about this topic. My opinion, this is the good, good background to discussion that we have a big problem. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned that environmental problem, because they use the water, we, we need to produce the raw material, uh, primary production. And of course, we have... Uh, um, we have impact uh, emission, the greenhouse gases, after that when we threw away that the waste that produce the methane, methane, for example, and this is the one of the, the very important, and of course that is some here in Poland, we have a poor people, uh, and they, they can buy a food, and this is the problem, as, as, as so, so, so society problem, that is the very important to discuss about that, of course. Here we concentrate now about the environment and the SDG is, uh, but of course the uh, the big big problem and very, very uh, and in my opinion will be the very uh, interesting discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sipanski, for providing us with this uh, valuable insight on uh, Poland's current state. Uh, on measuring food loss and uh, food waste. Uh, I don't know if one wants to uh, take the floor um, shortly now, or we will uh, proceed to uh, next presentation. The floor is open. I have a question. Yes. Uh, wonderful presentation. You were mentioning that... Um, Alexander, I will give you... Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, nice presentation. I have one question uh, for you to elaborate. You was mentioning that Households keep sixty percent of a share of food losses while processing. Where process manufacturers and processing, uh, uh, it's about fifteen point six. What are the main reasons or main drivers having this uh, losses in processing? What What's your experience? I explain and I show that um, uh, that the sometimes, of course, it depends on the different sectors. Yes, because uh, the different character. That uh, as I mentioned, that the dairy production is not a lot of in the one percent or less than one percent. But of course, that the uh, the biggest uh, the biggest uh, causes in in production. Uh, of course, sometimes accidents, let's say, that destroyed the, the packaging, for example. Sometimes during the, uh, during that, the packaging, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, uh, fall something. And, and this is, the, that is not, not is the big one. Um, uh, okay, I would have to say that um, uh, it's not, uh, uh, my opinion, accident, and that's it. Yes, the, 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 it is a is a problem in, in production. Yes, but of course, the different sector is the different uh, different uh, uh, different level of uh, of uh, of technological uh, higher technological is is, is the something uh, something uh, sometimes is the help to uh, help to, to 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 reduce the losses. Yes, and, and that's it. Thank you. Now it is my pleasure. We heard about consumption, uh, and uh, therefore it's my pleasure to uh, to pass the floor um, to uh, Miss Anna Kornatowska, who is a country manager um, here in Poland for Too Good to Go, a company originating from uh, Denmark. 
Um, she's responsible for running and developing Too Good To Go in Poland. The floor is yours. Uh, hello. Um, first of all, Um, yeah, it's not working. Uh, so I will just start. <laughs> oh, yeah, now it's working. Now it's working. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So hello again. My name is Anna Kuznatowska. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I am representing Too Good To Go, um, the biggest in the world marketplace to fight the food waste. And as it was said, we are global. We exist in 17 countries. But the most important here today, I guess, is that we are born in, in Denmark. Um, so this is another reason I'm so happy to, to be here on this event today. Um, I am really happy that we are touching this extremely important subject of the food waste. And uh, why is it so important? Uh, it was already said that uh, more than one third of food is being wasted, almost 5 million tons in Poland, uh, but around the world, um, imagine 79 tons every second is wasted. Uh, it's even hard to imagine the, 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 the quantity of the volume of this food that is going to, to the bin. And why is it so bad? Of course, um, it's obvious wasting food is wasting money. Um, we are wasting so much food while so many people are starving in the world. Uh, again, to show you the proportions, it would be enough to save one fourth of everything that we are wasting to, so, so that everybody in the world uh, have enough food to eat. Uh, of course, it's not so easy, but uh, it's just to show you the scale. But we often forget about another impact of, this, uh, of, of the food waste, which is the planet. When you are wasting the food, we are wasting all the resources that were used to produce this food. Uh, we are talking more and more about water that we use to produce the food. If we are, to, just to show you an example, by throwing one banana, we are throwing away like a 10 minutes shower the, the, the volume of water that we are using. Uh, we are using, we are wasting fuel, we are using human work, we are using wasting pesticides, fertilizers, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we often forget about this. And of course, the whole process of producing food um, is, uh, is emitting a CO2. And uh, again, to, to show you how, how big problem it is, um, the, the, the CO2 emitted, during the production of the food that we are wasting, it's 10% of the whole emission of CO2. 10% is the same amount as the, the land transport in the world. So I don't have to explain you that uh, we all know that cars and trucks, they are polluting the planet, but we forget that it's exactly the same pollution that we are making by wasting the food. Um, and we are talking also here about the business and the green transformation, how we can change it. Uh, the good news is that um, fighting the food waste is good for the planet, but also for the business. And uh, it's a gr extremely good news because then we can engage more businesses in this fight. And by business, I mean the, the food processing, I, I mean the distributors, the restaurants. Um, so uh, I think the the change should be driven by the business and then we can inspire people to, to fight the food waste because as it was said, 60% uh, of food is wasted in the household. In Europe, it's almost the same amount. So it's not only poles that are wasting so much uh, at home. So uh, being green, and doing the green transformation is good for the business. People want it. And um, we are, as a consumers, looking more and more at the companies that are eco-friendly, especially young generation uh, is choosing the companies that are doing something good uh, for the planet. So this is pretty good encouragement um, for, for everybody in the business to start to think green or go farther um, and not stop only on saying what we're planning or saying what we are doing, uh, but really do concrete actions. And um, 
about the concrete actions, one of uh, one of those is uh, saving food with uh, Too Good To Go. Uh, we have very big dreams. Uh, we are dreaming about the planet without the food waste. Um, I like to say that uh, we have a pretty weird business model because we are going to the auto destruction. Uh, we don't want to exist because we exist only because the food is wasted. And um, we want to inspire people to fight the food waste. So not only businesses, but also inspire people at home uh, to waste less, as we know that this is a half of the problem or even, or even more. So uh, what exactly are we doing? We are, an, we are more than an app, but today I'll just tell you about the app. So we are an application that connects people, hungry users, who can buy a meal with one third of the price, a meal that would be wasted. Uh, so usually it's in the end of the day that a restaurant, coffee shop or supermarket can just prepare a magic bag, which is like a surprise um, bag because we never know what's gonna be wasted in the end of the day. So they are preparing a bag, logging it into the app, and then a hungry user is just picking up this bag uh, from directly from the store, restaurant, uh, coffee shop, bakery. Um, so it's easy, it's um, nothing uh, complicated. Uh, every business, every food business has a um, food that is wasted because we can never predict how much food is going to be uh, sold uh, this day. And um, this solution is actually not only win-win, but win-win-win solution. Uh, as users, you are having a great meal with a great price and a satisfaction that by buying this meal, you did something good for the planet. As a business, uh, you saved food again for the, for the planet, but also you saved money and you brought new customers to your, to your business. And in the end, the planet is winning because all those, all those resources and CO2 that was emitted to the atmosphere is not being wasted. So um, again, by saving food, with too good to go at home with any other solution that that you can find, you as a as a consumer, as people, as uh, as um, business owners, you are saving the resources that were used, and by this we are reducing the the carbon um, emission to the to the planet. So. Um, there is there is a project called uh, called Drawdown. Uh, they are uh, researching on the solutions to ch to stop the maybe slower the climate changes, and uh, they actually um, showed that fighting the food waste is the solution number one to fight the climate changes. So, um, I'm very happy to to tell you this news, and I hope you're gonna remember because this is solution number one, the most efficient thing to do, and everybody can do something. I'm very happy that we have zero waste menu. I already said that we're going to sit here until we eat everything. And we can start with this and, uh, and then uh, just reflect on how we, can, how we can do something for our planet and uh, be a part of this uh, number one solution in the, um, uh, in the fight against the climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kornik. Chowska for giving us this uh, motivating uh, presentation on uh, on too good to go's uh, weird business model uh, still very uh, inspiring on how digitalization can uh, be supportive in reducing food loss and waste yes of course of course my pleasure hello thank you take my microphone okay. here Oh, it's working. Thank you. I'm Eva Joszowska from EIT Food. And uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you, Danish Embassy, for this great initiative. It's very, uh, I'm very happy to be here and uh, listen to all the very inspiring uh, presentations. Actually, I have one question, because uh, very often we say that too good to go is saving food. Uh, have you ever uh, conducted any research among your consumers what they are finally do with the food that they are purchasing through your app? Yes, we did. 90% of the food that was bought via To Good To Go uh, is eaten. Wow, this is a really amazing uh, result. Congrats. And that's, and that, thank you. And that's not all. Uh, we have research that shows that people who are using To Good To Go are more mindful later on in their life uh, when it comes to, 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 to just, uh, you know, um, food management at home and in their life. That's very great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. 
Yeah, please use the microphone. Can I just ask a follow-up question? Because um, every time I'm in Berlin, I love the app, and and I actually eat most from from the app predominantly. Uh, why it's not working in Poland as such in on a, such a scale as it is in Berlin? Is it is it embedded in the Polish culture not to be ready enough to do that? What are kind of difficulties you face with? Uh, we are just younger, so we are on the earlier stage of the business, uh, but uh, it works pretty well. We just uh, no, I'm we not just saying, I'm not saying it's not working. It's working so perfectly. There are, two, uh, there are two things. They are much much older than us. It was one of the first countries, Germany, and um, we just saved uh, three million of meals in Poland. So it's a pretty good uh, result. And why you are struggling in saving food in Warsaw, probably because uh, we have the best um, success rate uh, among all to good to go countries over 90% of the meals that are in the app are sold all over Poland in Warsaw is almost 100%. So actually we have such I always say crazy users they are the the, the bags are disappearing after a few seconds they are on the app. So it's just um, people are too happy to save meals and you need to be faster. <laughs> But I have. It is the. Pro I mean, sorry to follow up for that one. That it is a serious problem. It is a serious problem because, with my partner, we usually stay exactly at the time that is opening, and we're trying to really catch anything there. So good luck with finding new yeah. restaurants I that can, would like I to can, join that. Honestly, I can, I can give you some tips. At what time you can save the bag? But uh, what time they just faster than uh, us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, um, every day we have new partners. Uh, so we are we are adding partners at the same rhythm as other countries is just that the demand is just huge. And I'm happy to be the first uh, country in terms of the demand, but it is challenging for the users. Uh, so I was talking I, I, to... I will um, okay. close it here and we will, <laughs> but remember the question. I'm happy okay. to see we already have a vivid discussions, um, but we have a, a packed program. So I will now uh, give the floor to our next speakers. It's a combined presentation from the company Good Valley, Mr. Pavel Novak, who is a CEO here in Poland, and Mr. Gregor Brociak, uh, who is CEO and Group Vice President for Sustainable Development, Good Valley Agro. They are going to um, present um, some of their uh, approaches since Good Valley has uh, activities within the entire um, food value chain or farm to fork. Uh, and uh, they will provide us with some insight in how uh, they have sustainable food production. The floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Let me suggest that I start with a uh, presentation and Pavel will take over, uh, especially the consumer part of it, just in two minutes. Yeah, we'll try to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to start with, uh, uh, let me say that we are very much inspired by the Danish uh, thoughts about environment and sustainable production back in 1994. Uh, where we started our operations. Uh, but uh, before I get into that, let me just remind uh, quickly this for the frame, the setup, which you, Mr. Ambassador, described very well in the beginning. We are dealing uh, or facing very interesting challenges now, especially in Europe with the European Green Deal and the sustainability and from farm to fork model in the agriculture and reduction of use of resources, which is very welcome, meaning reduction of use of fertilizers, uh, artificial fertilizers, reduction of uh, pesticides, uh, antibiotics in the production, circular economy, uh, ESG, very welcome things. Um, one of those things is also increasing the uh, area and uh, the size of pro ecological production up to 25% within EU by 2030 which seems to be a very, very challenging uh, project. And uh, just before this meeting, let me share the, the, the message. The European Parliament rejected this uh, part of European Green Deal, uh, regarding it probably as not uh, possible and not very much uh, uh, rational in the face of the challenges we have now with famine or food safety, energy safety, and so on with the current crisis. So. Uh, uh, let's uh, let's follow this development very very closely because in general we need to be very very rational and compromising about things, having in mind these challenges ahead of us. So producing efficiently, but also sustainably, not killing and not reducing the production overall. Uh, let me come back to this very start in 1994, uh, where Tom Axelgaard, a Danish farmer, 
said, well, I'm very frustrated with the production setup in Western Europe and the waste of resources. And he asked the question, why should we import uh, re uh, resources to produce things in Denmark and then resell them to Eastern Europe? Let's do it in Eastern Europe. The new possibilities uh, uh, occurred at that time in our part of uh, Europe. And he, together with 50 farmers, started this production. And I had the privilege to accompany them from the very beginning. And so it was not, he was not using, we were not using words like sustainability, like European Green Deal or uh, UN sustainability goals. We just said simple logic and save the resources. That's how we started, and that's how we do it today, but still getting inspiration from uh, Danish know-how and experience. We have mastered during these years, from the very beginning, trying to build up a closed uh, and very much integrated full value chain. So we have our own crop production. We produce crop grains for our own feed. We had, have our own feed factory for animals. So we cover 100% of feed uh, with our own production and feed our animals. And then we uh, slaughter and, and, and process the animals in our own uh, abattoir uh, close to, to the whole setup. Additionally, what we added from 2005 is production of renewable energy based on biogas plants. So we use the animal manure and we have used some bio, biomass from, from plants and we also use some waste from the slaughterhouse to produce energy. We produce electricity, we produce heat, which covers our need, and then we use the manure again on the fields so the, the circle gets closed. Uh, set up, especially in this scale. Just to picture, to display you and uh, make the impression of how we organized, uh, we have chosen to, to locate our facilities in Pomerania. So not very far from one another, uh, with a distance of, let's say, mostly 50 or 100, 150 kilometers, uh, as close as possible in order to reduce transport, in order to reduce stress for animals, in order to make it rational and sustainable. Just a picture of one of our sites, uh, which consists of farthest in the, in the background, a center for arable production with machinery, transportation base uh, and center for cars. And then we see a yellow farm with a pig production. And also we have a lot of fields around. And we see uh, uh, in the left bottom corner, a biogas plant, the first one in Poland built back in 2005. And just to mention, this is uh, the, the picture we want to, to copy. And we have copied a lot of places, let's say about 20 units like that in Pomerania, just to have it in one place in a, in, a, in a close vicinity. One important remark uh, coming back to this biogas plant uh, adventure is that we are able to cover 100% of our needs for electricity and around 70% of our needs for heat. And we even sell electricity to the grid about 40% of the production. At the same time, biogas plants, because we capture methane from pig manure, uh, allows us to reduce the CO2 footprint. So we are really compared to other production, uh, animal production around us, very, very uh, uh, light in, in carbon footprint. And one last remark before I uh, give the floor to Pavo and the products, uh, I think we should have in mind that uh, big farming as, as this, or fairly big farming, uh, together with small farms which coexist in Poland, and we, we saw the number, 1.300 1, 1. Uh, million Polish farms. Uh, let's compare it to Danish numbers. I think it's about 30,000 farms in Denmark. So even times seven, if we take the size into account, gives a picture of very fragmented agriculture not uh, being able to efficiently produce the food we need. So. Have in mind that big agriculture can be sustainable and it's necessary to continue and have a good frame to produce the food in good quality, which can secure the right flow and the right uh, uh, um, uh, offer for the clients. And that's what we're trying to do. In details, Pavel, please take over. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting us here and uh, for great initiative.
I will try to put a bit more details, uh, still looking on the time, which is short. But uh, basically, just referring to what Anna said uh, before in the presentation, we are also a bit in the camp, and which uh, with some some people is saying you are crazy because uh, because we are also saying uh, to uh, actually openly that we should eat less meat. Uh, you know, farm company producing basically meat. We are saying we should eat less meat, and this is actually because we are really believed that the way we are consuming meat uh, in the Western civilization is not a it's not a sustainable way. Uh, we, we should eat uh, simply less. We should think a bit more, and especially this way that I would say the race for the for the meat consumption is create the the cost focus, and the cost focus is creates uh, cost for environmental, uh, and that's actually what we believe is completely wrong. So our setup, uh, you know, started uh, some time ago and required. <laughs> uh, a lot of efforts uh, give us opportunity to 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 produce completely different uh, way than uh, than others. Uh, some of the futures we are presenting to our customers. So, good agriculture practice, climate friendly, climate friendly agriculture uh, from field to fork, uh, and actually pro Polish product. Uh, I don't know if. Uh, Many of Polish colleagues or Danish colleagues uh, knows it that 30% uh, of the pigs, which is uh, produced or slaughtered in Poland, is not coming, is not born in Poland. 50%, around 50% of meat is actually not coming from Poland. That's uh, that's actually big numbers, and not many people knows it. Good practice. I also said uh, many times, and uh, we have also some some network talk before. You know, we are good farmers, and the good farmers also knows that uh, everything what we do is also uh, to be good for for our animals. So, a lot of efforts with animal welfare, with taking care of them. Uh, actually, it's coming hands and hands with uh, with the climate and with the with the impact. Uh, it was said thirty percent. Our research saying around one fifth greenhouse emission is uh, coming from the from the agriculture uh, yeah let, let's see there's uh, also different calculations uh, depends how you see it uh, uh, there's also different calculations related to the meat uh, itself i would say our way of uh, of of doing uh, production in both sectors in agriculture but also food is actually giving us that the, our initial or preliminary footprint is around half of the eu average uh, which is actually also quite, uh, quite, quite okay compared to the worldwide level because EU is also doing quite a lot of things. But actually, our approach, and I think uh, I would like to set it here, that basically what what inspiring us is uh, some research saying, also based on IPCC report recently, that even though we fulfill our obligations or our plans with reduction is still not enough. Uh, I think in Denmark, I've seen the research that top 20 companies, if they will fulfill their sustainable plans, it will be still not enough to, to do anything with the, with the, with the temperature grow. So we, we simply have to do more. And we are doing uh, quite a lot of uh, in good value already. Uh, just about the size, uh, Gregor said about uh, a bit the scale. I would also uh, say it because we think about agriculture that should be small, small farmers, you know, one cow, two pigs, uh, and one chicken is not sustainable at all. Uh, you know, the way we do uh, today farming is basically we decide on almost every square meter what nutrition should be there, uh, how many grain we should put there because these fields can, can raise it. Everything is digitalized, so yeah just about the topic for today. And one thing also about the topic for today, we, we talk a lot of about uh, yeah, uh, wastes of food. This is also what we believe, uh, because sometimes we think, OK, plastic, that's bad. Uh, we, should, uh, yeah, we should go back for, for let's say, a uh, different way of packing or, or, or food, food chain deliveries. Uh, we, we simply cannot do it. We, we, we are growing. You know, the towns are growing. Population is growing. So. Uh, all our packaging is 100% uh, from recycling and is 100% to be recyclable. And we believe that's the right way because then our expiry date is longer and we are not wasting food uh, or reducing. Yeah, just uh, some research. 
Uh, we said a lot of about consumers. It's almost half already in Poland and is raising. And uh, if you look for young population, it's even more. And uh, I think that's great. Uh, and just ending, uh, we also believe in good value that uh, is not only the way we do, but also we should uh, we should create the awareness. So we are doing a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, communication uh, also with uh, raising awareness, with uh, with basically giving more uh, details about how we do things. Also, uh, found a way because uh, what we believe uh, our role is to give. Uh, to consumers' uh, choice. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Novak and Mr. Brociak, for uh, giving a presentation. Oh, from, okay, uh, it was, uh, 30 seconds before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Even more welcome. <laughs> Um, then, then actually, I will take the opportunity to pose a question um, because uh, with with the current um, situation in uh, in the world economy and rising food prices, how how do you see um, the possibilities for uh, upholding the sustainability agenda and also the circular economy approach? Uh, is it rising or declining? Yeah, well, in general, as I mentioned, we <clears throat> we are challenged by the current situation, so the crisis about food uh, supply, energy supply. Uh, at the same time, we are facing a growing challenge of climate change. And uh, to put it very bluntly, I would say, if we do not uh, die of famine in two, three years, we will die of climate changes in 10, 15, 20 years. So uh, we need to, to look at both things and try to find no, very unpopular word compromise uh, to produce about producing enough food now uh, in a way which will not affect our the climate changes uh, more than absolutely necessary uh, which could be a challenge in itself but it's necessary for us to to find a way other we, we have invented a an a vaccine against covid 19 but i'm afraid we will not uh, invent a vaccine against climate changes thank you thank you our next speaker um, will be uh, Mr. Alexander Kamoluya. Sorry if I pronounced it wrongly, Alexander. Um, he is the country director here in Poland for Grundfos, and uh, uh, I have it here for you. Here you are. And obviously, water is a resource um, heavily used in the agriculture and the food industry. Uh, Luckily, Grundfos have solutions to that, and we're going to hear some of, of that. The floor is yours. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my absolute pleasure presenting Grundfos, the world, the world leading manufacturer of water solutions and uh, water services and globally in this, in, this, in this forum. Uh, the topic is super urgent. and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have brought uh, uh, quite an extensive information package, but we'll be walking through the essential things. So first of all, we do recognize challenges and opportunities which are which do exist in food and beverage uh, industrial vertical. Secondly, we address these challenges here and now with our technological footprint, with our services footprint. And then as a third, we do have wonderful examples how we do contribute. We have a mission to address at Grundfos to address world's water and climate challenges and making life of people better. That's where we we are we are super happy to contribute into the transformation of food and beverage vertical with our solutions. Um, first of all, everything starts with with being present, actually acknowledging and respecting the challenges as the industry has. That's my pleasure being here and representing uh, Grundfos as a manufacturer, as, as, a, as a leading company. And then it's all about to us, our contribution is about reliability and sustainability, while sustainability is about energy and, and water. And what exactly we say about energy and water, you know, giving you a kind of a, a practical experience. And when we go down to the plant level of specific dairy or, 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 uh, or brewery or meat or, uh, yeah, so we talk about how do we improve water management? How do we improve operational uptime? So actually in ensuring a supply chain stability, ensuring no risks and breakdowns are happening. How do we contribute and improve energy efficiency and consumption? Because energy 
it's on a on a on a high pressure. And um, you can say, hey, Grundfos, so you're a pump manufacturer. You're known as like, a pump manufacturer for the last 70 plus years. That's where we go beyond our expertise. That's where we start with a solution we are expert in. We have our highest expertise, and then we go to applications and the plant level, and actually applying on our scheme and our productions all wonderful opportunities and innovations coming from digital, connecting our systems to a cloud and getting the data, the data which talks and we can have actionable insights and actions based on that data actually applied on a plant level. Uh, then our expertise goes to, to verticals. And I was mentioning food processing, soft drinks, breweries. And we are so in detail what's happening on those plants. And I hope everybody will download and will have access to this information, but specifically boiler systems, water treatment, wastewater management, and then exactly what's happening on your dairy, what's happening on your brewery, and where we as Grundfos with our solutions can contribute here and now on that specific part of production where a plant manager faces unacceptable risks on downtime or where energy manager faces higher costs coming from energy consumption, which everything ultimately impacts at cost of production, impacts at supply chain, impacts on stability. And when machine fails in production, as we have seen 16.5%, if machine fails, ingredients are being lost, or raw material is being lost. This is where we contribute. Um, we are running two major global programs around energy optimization and around machine health. Energy optimization where we say and we contribute how our how pumps can be improved. All pumps globally consume from eight to 10% of overall energy consumption. So we run a program on Polish level, on European level, on a global level, working from one factory to another factory, running audits and, and contributing, by the way, into implementation, applying grants and, uh, and having a partnership with different banks. When it comes to machine health, on every plant level, we define what is a critical machinery we should, and going beyond pumping industry, we should apply digitalization. And you see this wonderful sensor, but it's more than sensor, it's all the data coming into the cloud. And how can we improve the uptime, how can we improve the efficiency of those machines? That's what we do. And then we have, we have thousands of examples how our presence and actions contributed into very specific plant with very specific outcomes. So this one from, 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 from Denmark and, and Mr. Anders was super amazed that we have applying our technological uh, footprint we have we have we have helped uh, the brewery to save to re, to, to reuse ninety percent of, uh, of of industrial water, and you know in brewery, it's they had as I recall three point seven liters of water to produce one bottle of beer, and they have an ambition to 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 lower the water consumption down to one point seven liters of water. That's how we read by our presence and open questions. That's how we read a specific planned challenges and ambitions and then translate into technological feed, being a technological company. Um, we have many different examples, but ultimately when it comes to a Polish market mm, with uh, those two programs, energy efficiency and reliability, we are, we are contributing and we have examples of, uh, of um, uh, of dairy or uh, or uh, brewery uh, having a return on investment of, uh, of one half, three and a half, four years, depending on the scale. So once again, thank you very much. I'm looking forward for dialogue here live and afterwards uh, online or uh, beyond Polish uh, market. Uh, for us, it's essential not only to drive uh, global sustainable goals and development goals from our perspective, but also contributing into this forum, into the challenges of this forum with our technological footprint. Thank you very much and looking forward. Thank you very much.
Yeah, but actually, I will say um, the floor is now open for more in-depth discussions. So if you want to address a question either to Alexander or to some of the other who have been giving presentation, now is uh, a good moment. If not, then I will um, pose a question, um, and I will uh, ask a question to uh, to uh, Dr. Szepanski. Uh, and um, you were mentioning um, in uh, in your presentation that it was the first year that you and your institute have conducted a survey on food loss and food waste. Um, have it brought uh, any? Um, um, results um, from uh, you are representing a governmental institution. Have it uh, done any result in uh, political attention in the results that you have uh, brought forward? Um, we talk about measuring uh, and then targeting and then acting. Uh, how does uh, you see um, the, the political um, observations on your results? Okay. Mm -hmm. well, it, uh, you know, we discussed about and, and uh, the presentation was the information about the implemented that the, the strategy from the EU, EU strategy, EU directive, yeah, the strategy from the uh, from the farms to the table and so on. That we, 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 that the government and the, the, the parliament should be implemented in here in Poland. That is the first of all. But of course, of course, that uh, I would like to, to today maybe the the the, the, the next uh, the, the next session the, the interesting because you in, in in Denmark you have a very good achieve the challenge that you, you reduce I don't know fifty percent uh, losses and uh, and it is a very important and I would like to I would like to know what what we can do that yes we with with with, with this problem with the, the, this problem and. What, what else? We we try to implement it um, that the our result, our conclusion implemented to the each year annual report, each year annual uh, evaluation. How how it is exactly? Yes, because we have to. I don't know. In each two years, three years, we have to report to to to, to European Union that the government, the Minister of Climate and Environment, should should. Uh, report that the situation and we prepared the data about that and uh, and uh, we would like to you know that the launch new methods launched uh, collect the data because it's the very important we in our project what is the big problem to 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 back the information from the farmers from the companies from the shops it was a very big big problem yes it uh, and uh, we need to we need to work on uh, this uh, uh, to improve that situation and uh, and implemented new methods to collect and we have to know exactly what it is now and what will be improved and how we improve in the in the future yes and 2030 is not so so long time and uh, and my opinion that we have a lot of very big challenge to 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 eliminate and uh, reduce that the losses yes thank you and i do agree uh, time is short yeah. for 2030 yes dr Sef dr Stefanski, i didn't catch it from your presentation was it the first time you conducted the all the methodology or this is consecutive years because i was going to ask for trends do you see it changing no, we have we have we have not the, the trends because we have we have at the start point yes and mm -hmm. uh, now we launched that the collection the data each year yes and the, maybe the next year we have the the the, the result from uh, from 2022 that's it and we would like to compare that's it we have only the start point we don't have uh, I don't know the, 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 the if I uh, well uh, if I remember well. Uh, to the, the the previous research it was the federation bank uh, uh, bank uh, food banks yes in here in poland and 2008 but it's completely different methods that it's 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 very hard to compare 
Do you got, have you got the reverse data? Sorry, because there was the data of the share of particular part of the food being waste. Have you got the reverse data? So how what is the share of wasted food within the household that is being bought at all? That uh, is the same. Very, very difficult uh, to 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 collect the data from this uh, household because we have to direct contact with each people and to maybe that uh, I we thought about that that uh, we would like to we would like to implement it uh, apps that people responsible for environment can put the data about what happened it's 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 it, it's uh, your home yes for example yes but because people awareness that is the very important and uh, we would like to collect the data very friendly very fast very easy yes because uh, and of course uh, we would like to everyone yes this is the, the best solution of course but uh, we we need to we need to we working on that the apps uh, to collect each each date each week you can put the information okay i i threw away something i don't know bread i don't know uh, what else that's the soft drink or something like that and uh, we collect that uh, and we can uh, easy and for us is very uh, very easy to way to collect the data yes that is the very important if I may add, because you're asking what is wasted at home, yeah. the most, well, the fresh products, the first the bread, fruits and veg, and uh, cold cuts. So what? The, the was, uh, yeah, yeah, the bread, the bread, the fresh food meat, for example, and uh, the fruits. It's, it's a so lot. We, we know we know the areas that potentially we can improve and change the habits there, mm -hmm. because your presentation is brilliant to to raise the awareness of the problem. Yeah. Now, the way I look at that, I look from the marketing perspective, which is to change the habit. Mm -hmm. Because what the, your presentation does to me is I see three main areas that we can potentially lower the waste of the food, right? Because all those 1.87% mm -hmm. doesn't interest me from the big perspective. It interests me this 60%, 15%, and 14%, right? These are the four areas that potentially may have, if changing habits there, we might have a significant impact on the food, food waste there, right? So what I think the brilliancy of this presentation is to raise the awareness of the problem. Mm -hmm. The follow-up for to change the habit is to have more data to understand how we could change the habit of, of consumers, how we could change the habit of uh, of companies there. Okay, I mean, uh, maybe the good idea to do our our website about our project that we have the campaign and that we have a different, different uh, Causes we explain that the different what we can do that by self. Yeah? For example, we we can we uh, we don't we not necessary to buy and uh, buy too, we, we buy too much. Yes, we, we we need to make a list. For example, we have to change that uh, check what we have uh, on the shelf. Yes, and for example, that is the big problem because we we bought uh, uh, too much. We bought uh, I don't know. We have. Uh, at home, we have that the products that we for completely forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? That's uh, of course that the the whole the manage the 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 the, the, uh, the our our storage. Let's say yes. That the the, the, the second. What we, we, uh, another to prepare? We prepare too much, especially during the holiday, that the Christmas, Easter. That, that is the the, the big that problem. Is, that's yes? true. And and then the question you ask is why we did it. Why we did it? Yeah, well, in, in terms of consumer, in terms of, I don't know. In terms of home, in, in terms of homes, why we did this particular action, mm -hmm. and it's the custom that you want to change. And then, if you bought it because Polish has a culture of feasts, then the question is, should we should we influence that kind of culture, right? If we bought it that because the food is too cheap and too accessible, which might be also the yeah. answer. Then the question mark is more can we change that one and so on right so so it's more about understanding the reason why we behave certain yeah, ways okay. and then attacking that particular behavior and changing it. i will uh, yeah, before going into uh, a larger <laughs> met methodological okay. uh, discussion uh, but i will i will uh, we close uh, the discussion if by the one sentence uh, that uh, I remember very well, but because I, I told you that uh, that the threw away the, the many uh, hundreds that breads, for example, yes. But I remember my grandparents respect each of pie of the breads. It's a problem, yes. We have to I don't know 
to, to economical situation is better. We uh, access to the food is very it's easy and is a problem. Yes, and uh, for example. I, I I I can imagine the, the, my grandparents completely don't uh, you know through a bread you know you know bread with the sugar and that's it you know with with anything yeah Anna you indicated uh... it's I just wanted to say that we did a study uh, before Easter uh, what we are wasting and why so I can share the results later with you it was um, very. Um, popular topic before Easter in media also, so we can see that it is in our part of our culture to understand also why we need to have too much food at home. But uh, what we can do first is to admit, and I think it's a taboo topic that we are wasting so much food. And uh, Poland, because of our history, uh, we have to have more food than other countries. And first we need to admit, and then we need to act. Um, I have also some tips, but we don't have time now, maybe maybe later. So awareness uh, first. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I will um, close the discussion for now because uh, time is, um, is running. And uh, we um, will now proceed uh, to uh, a commercial perspective uh, on how we can avoid uh, throwing things out uh, and prolonging uh, product shelf life. Uh, and that is done by uh, Mr. Jesper Packet Pedersen, who is head of uh, public uh, affairs from Christian Hansen. Christian Hansen was actually nominated as the most sustainable uh, company in the world in 2019 uh, and have been top three uh, since then. So, uh, All the way down to second place. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, but still, I think your presentation will be valid. So here you are. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you to the, the Danish government for hosting the, the World Food Summit and uh, to both you and Marcena and uh, Ambassador Tuft for um, arranging this fantastic event. Uh, we're so happy to uh, participate. I'll say a few words initially about Christian Hansen because we're not a very um, uh, well-known company. We're a supplier. Uh, we're from the ingredients and uh, bioscience uh, sector. And you don't often uh, see our logo in the supermarket but you very frequently consume our products because we actually deliver to about 50% uh, of the world's uh, yogurt and cheese manufacturing. So we are in um, part of the staple diets of a lot of uh, people every day. We uh, typically reach, um, and this is according to some of our uh, um, auditors, um, they have calculated that we reach up to a billion people every single day, although we do it at the molecular level, uh, not with, with end products. But as such, we actually end up having a very big impact as you do when you deliver uh, microbiological solutions. And we're very uh, aware of uh, what we are able to do, especially when it comes to prevention of food waste, which is a slightly different perspective um, than some of the uh, solutions that we've heard about today. And I'll, uh, I'll get back to that in, in just a minute. Um, what we were able to calculate in 2019 was that 82% of our revenue actually attached directly to the sustainable development goals. And that I think um, created a lot of interest, both around uh, Christian Hansen as a company, but also around the ingredients sector, because I think it's um, at the time, it was a little bit unusual to see um, a company in the food and agriculture sector actually have that kind of attachment uh, to these goals. And it's been a really interesting discussion uh, ever since. Um, and we continue to, um, to have a significant profile around uh, sustainability and also develop that, uh, that profile as we go along. So many of our solutions over our, uh, we're a company that's almost 150 years old. Many of our solutions are actually quite conventional uh, when it comes to fermentation technology. That's the basic technology that we use across um, the solutions that we deliver to the fresh dairy sector, increasingly also to the animal feed sector, um, the plant health sector, as we call it, which is also sometimes called um, biopesticides. All of this can be derived from fermentation technology, which is essentially a biological process. And it's uh, something that we find really fascinating that we can look to uh, nature and to ancient uh, technologies. You can see that fermentation technology has been used um, in ancient times, but we're actually today able to address 
uh, really quite modern and contemporary uh, problems with this technology, not just us, but the rest of the, the sector is increasingly looking at new applications of it. So um, our uh, work on, when it comes to reducing uh, food waste is mostly around extending the shelf life in a natural way. What we have uh, seen, we've heard some of these um, numbers already, uh, but really when you focus into fresh dairy, that is one of the main uh, areas, especially when you come to the, the household level that uh, Dr. Sipensky was mentioning, where we see so much uh, waste. And it basically is because consumers are, are uh, very uneasy when it says on their product that it's uh, about to reach the, um, uh, the due date uh, many consumers uh, just look at that product and they don't even, uh, they don't smell it, they don't look at it, they don't taste it, they simply uh, throw it away and go and buy a new product. Um, if we are able to push that date by either X amount of days or sometimes even up to a week on certain products, uh, we can reduce uh, the occurrence of that situation where consumers simply just uh, look at the product and, and toss it um, instead of consuming it. And we are able to actually fight um, bad bacteria. Um, our solutions are also bacteria, but they're good bacteria. If we can reduce the occurrence of um, uh, listeria or, or um, mold or rot um, uh, in a significant way, then consumers are perfectly willing to actually consume the product. Uh, they just get really, really scared by the due date. Um, and so here you see some of the numbers that we've uh, been able to aggregate. We've heard it uh, again from Dr. Sapensky. We also heard it uh, in Anna's presentation that it's just really uh, a category of food that is uh, very often that very often goes to waste. It also goes uh, for um, fresh cut meat, uh, fresh fish, uh, which has a large surface where bacteria can uh, bad bacteria can thrive, unless of course you use the good bacteria to to fight it off with. Um, Here's some specific numbers that we have collected around uh, yogurt. Uh, we have also done quite a few consumer surveys where we can demonstrate that consumers, if they can see that a, um, um, a food supplier, a manufacturer has made a significant effort to reduce food waste, they're actually willing to give priority towards that product when they, when they purchase it. And this is something we should all really think about because that means these efforts are not just sort of a, a do good, feel good effort. It's actually something that can drive um, consumer behavior and uh, can even be a competitive advantage uh, over time. That's certainly what we find. Here's an example of what um, uh, yogurt samples uh, look like. The top uh, levels are um, uh, basically without uh, the ingredients uh, and the uh, microbiology that we provide. And the bottom is um, when you actually use our ingredients. You can see with your own eye that there's a difference. And consumers obviously react to this if they get a sense that their product is about to produce uh, mold or rot, uh, then it, it goes out. So we also have a policy recommendation because of I think we've done um, so much great work in um, what the EU Commission calls the reuse uh, segment of the um, food waste hierarchy. And um, we can actually hear from Anna that it's, it's almost at the point where you, uh, it's, it's hard to actually get your products because there's such so much focus on it. And I think that's a fantastic development because frankly, that's not where we were just five years ago. Um, and we should really continue to do everything we can. I hope that you are in 140 countries very soon. Um, but it is striking to us that uh, there is not that much of a focus on the, the uh, top um, part of this uh, food hierarchy where, where you can really make a huge difference, and that is in the prevention uh, part. And um, the EU Commission has put this at the top of the food waste hierarchy because there, this is actually where you, can, you are able, if you make an effort, you are able to make the most gains. And uh, we believe that you can do a lot with uh, microbiological solutions. Uh, there are other ways to do it as well, but we really think that policymakers should increasingly think about prevention, um, not instead of reuse or anything. We absolutely need to continue uh, that focus, but we can expand our thinking about how we reduce uh, food waste if we increasingly focus on the prevention part. Thank you, Yeba. Thank you. 
thank you, Jesper, for providing us with uh, on uh, not only embracing sustainability, but also the SDG goals. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone wants to um, pose a question. Yeah, I yes, just Anna? wanted to say how impressed I am by what you're doing in Christian Hansen and uh, not only adding the dates to you know how how long the product can be consumed, but uh, I just wanted to share that Christian Hansen is also the partner of our educational campaign, which is called Often Good After, because very often we are throwing away the products that can be eaten after the date. And uh, thanks to, to you, we have a uh, um, big success in this campaign in Poland and other countries. So uh, you should be proud of this uh, as well. Thank you. Then um, I think I will uh, allow myself to introduce our next speaker, which is uh, Mr. Bent uh, E.P. Mikkelsen, um, who is a professor uh, at uh, Urban uh, Food System Transformation, but also founder of Young Minds Food Lab at the University of Copenhagen. And um, Bent, he will uh, provide us with scientific knowledge on the opportunities I have it here while I'm talking, but I will give it to you here. <laughs> the opportunities um, that can be brought forward, not only in, uh, in, uh, in education, but also commercial-wise and uh, digital-wise. So the floor is yours, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks a lot um, for inviting me. And, and I would like to start by congratulating you guys down here in, in, in Warsaw by pushing and promoting this, uh, this agenda. I mean, both food systems transformation, food waste uh, uh, mitigation, and and the digital agenda is so international. So we, we definitely need um, international cooperation here. Um, so I'm going to speak a bit about food waste mitigation um, from a data and from a digital uh, perspective. You may wonder what are these kids uh, doing here? Uh, they are. Uh, uh, that's the. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, can I go back? Yes, I can. Um, what are they doing? Uh, they're part of a, a, a program. We actually, in line with what you say, the educational thing, I mean, can we teach these kids to be the future food waste fighters? Yes, we can. Um, it's a program called uh, Send Science and the Magic of Food, CESAM. Um, it's being funded by the MSCA program. And I actually want to spell it out because being here in po Poland, I. I um, take pride in mentioning that the MSCA is the Marie Sklodowska Curie Action. They are funding, I mean, um, um, the, the promotion of science, digital solutions um, to, to learn uh, kids and citizens about the role of, uh, of research. Um, so, um, and, um, all right. Um, my point of departure would be data drivenness. It's, is it all about measuring? And sometimes when I uh, lack inspiration, how to start a presentation, I would start thinking, could I, for example, quote Albert Einstein? Yes, I can. Not everything that can be counted counts. Um, not everything that counts can be counted. And I should make a, a disclaimer here because it has an exception, except for food waste and except for easily being able to measure. So, um, and maybe also there's an exception for Denmark because I'm actually gonna speak about some uh, digital uh, technology, technology assisted solutions that can bring us uh, forward. Um, and you probably uh, know this idea that uh, once you start measuring, once you start putting the light, uh, the focus on something, then you are maybe not halfway, but you are some of the way that putting attention to something, looking at something uh, actually uh, changes behavior. But the other thing is, of course, that data drivenness, being a manager and having the data, um, then you can start acting. We are, we are data driven in, in daily life. When I drive my car, I would be, be looking at my speedometer and, and if I'm driving too fast, I would hit the brake, right? So I take some information and I make decisions. Mm -hmm. I, may, I might be uh, measuring my blood pressure, and if it's too high, I would go exercise. So we are data-driven, data-driven, data-driven in our daily lives, but not, that's my point, 
necessarily in the area of, of, of food waste. So um, for arenas, and I think we spoke about, a bit about that already, um, there's the domestic, there's the retail, and, 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 and I think it's fair to say that the majority is probably in the domestic area, but what I'm gonna speak about is the retail and the food service. Um, and I'm actually uh, a bit proud of you. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned the idea that we're good at many things and, and then our food waste, digitalization, but you're also good at partnering, partnerships. So being at a university, I, I couldn't work alone here. I need uh, the cooperation with uh, clever people that knows about uh, food waste and retail, uh, clever people that knows about uh, food save, service uh, data collection, and I'm happy to be part of a mini delegation from Denmark, Meta here from East Mali, and, and Morten from uh, GS1 Denmark. Hi, Morten, I hope you're sitting uh, back in Copenhagen, uh, to present two, um, two uh, concrete solutions that might be a way forward to get us um, 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 a better food waste uh, uh, data. Um, so, some insights from Denmark. We are as I said, I think we are good at, uh, at digital solutions. We also uh, working with uh, what we call living labs and, uh, and it's knowledge triangle. The idea that as a researcher, as a university person, you cannot work alone. You need to work with people like Ismail. You need to work with, with people like TS1. You need to work with uh, education and young people. You need to work with more people in order to uh, create solutions. Um, and then I think it's fair to say we have been having the 10 years of or 20 years of, oh, let me, yeah, I shouldn't exaggerate, uh, uh, many years of, uh, of focus on what the food service can do, the food service, the public institutions, but also the restaurants, what can they do? It's not only the private consumer and the domestic, the households, it's also the food service that can do something. And then, of course, um, the digital uh, or the vigilance towards the coming EU re regulation. You know that that's the two, uh, 2019 regulation uh, advising, inviting, or uh, actually requesting the member states to collect data. Uh, and my point is that collecting data on a national scale, that's, that's fine. What, what we are discussing here or that I'm uh, introducing to you guys here is the micro scale. How can we collect data in the retail sector, in a corner store, in a supermarket? How can we collect data in, in, a, in a food service operation? Um, so that's my distinction, food service and retail as, as two important arenas. Um, and in and, and, and food service, at least in Denmark, I would say, it's fair to say that food waste mitigation strategy is a must. You cannot be there if you don't have a strategy. Retail, a little lacking behind, I would say. Um, and um, basically what you need to do, now I'm introducing the, what is the technology, what is the, what is the digital solution here? Basically, what you need to know is the type, the production date, and the amount. So easily measuring what is the amount, what is the amount of, of kilos, what is the type of food, and the production date. And, um, and the good thing is that there is actually, and Morten is, is going to speak about that, there is actually a smart barcode that can tell the due date, that can tell the batch number. If you know the batch number, then you can speed up, you can make your, your, your food waste manage, management in the retail store much easier. So this is basically what you need to, uh, to be able to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to measure. And um, I'm not gonna go into details with that. This just to say, we did actually a literature study uh, on what is available out there, digital smart solution, not a lot. Um, so in summary, Technology assisted food waste uh, monitoring. What can we conclude from the work we've been doing so far? Well, there's some increasing attention on smart solutions for food service, restaurants, hospital kitchens, the, 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 the big kitchens, not so much attention uh, on, on smart solutions for retail. Um, there's a considerable attention though to traceability. Uh, the idea that you need to know about the batch number uh, in order to uh, improve your traceability work. So it's not only food waste uh, mitigation, it's also the work on traceability that you can actually withdraw um, batches that, is, uh, that needs to be withdrawn. 
Um, there's only one for the for the smart barcode that Martin will be speaking about. There's only one published article I can see uh, on this uh, in the gray gray literature. Ergo, there's a potential for innovation and for cross disciplinarity. So let me just uh, end up by showing you a solution, one way to work with this bringing in the suppliers, the technology providers of the smart solutions, for example, eSmiley could be GS1, in a local community. This is the local community of Nairhidden, west of Copenhagen. We call it the Nairhidden Food, Waste, Living and Learning Lab. And what is this about? It's basically about trying to make a small laboratory um, evolving around the classroom food lab uh, working on the school canteen and trying some of these technology solutions in the school canteen, the local uh, food store, maybe the local co-op, and keep in mind a school in Denmark um, is about 500 families, 500 kids, 500 families. Why not test some of these solutions back in the households, in the families? And then, as I said in the bottom, the technology providers. So. I think that was a very fast walk through, and you probably already figured it out. Ben, he didn't do all, all that work. No, he didn't. I work with together with these guys, so uh, thanks to them uh, as well. So, thanks to you. Thank you, Ben. I don't know if anyone wants to... Uh, I've to got a question. question. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. I'm representing retail, so I'm very keen to understand why retail is lagging behind. What's the reason and what would be the solution? My simple answer would be um, packaging. It's pa uh, I hope I, I won't, don't want to offend anybody, but the packaging industry is... I mean, you already know this barcode. Probably Martin is going to speak more about it, but I mean, you need a barcode. This is a dumb... A stupid barcode. It doesn't know the batch, batch number. But smart barcode knows the batch number. And once you know the batch number, you also know the due date or the expiry date, right? So it's all about, or one thing, one barrier at least is you need to have new packaging uh, material. Uh, yeah, which is why I'm speaking. I'm advocating for the cross disciplinarity. This is the, the this is the problem here. We need both the retailers. We need the food food producers manufacturers, and we need the packaging industry. So they all <laughs> need to work together in order to, to, um, to, to solve this problem. Thank you. Other questions? Yes. I could. I would like to also just comment that uh, the innovations are there because, uh, for example, we as EIT Foods, we are supporting a lot of innovators and innovations which are also in um, uh, preventing food uh, waste area and for example, smart labels or smart packaging, but it's not enough. And I agree that we need uh, cooperation of many stakeholders in the sector and uh, legislations and also rising awareness and motivation. So I'm very glad that we could hear so many, uh, so many cases uh, today. Uh, because education, not only consumer education, but also food sector through all the value chain. Well, yeah, and restaurants also, Agnieszka is adding, because last year we conducted the activity Restaurant for the Future, to which we um, invited Horeca representatives to identify good practices uh, for sustainable practices in the restaurant. So I suppose all this kind of uh, exercises for the sector are also very needed. Thank you. Um, speaking about uh, stakeholders, um, I know that Bent has a stakeholder and a good colleague and, uh, and partner, uh, and that is uh, Ms. Mette uh, Toftegård Rasmussen, who is uh, head of food waste solution at East Miley, and the commercial perspective uh, to some of the things Bent just addressed. The floor is yours, Mette. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me. I'm very pleased to uh, to be here. Yeah, and my name is Meta, and uh, I represent Ismaili, uh, which is a Danish company, um, and we are also now uh, represented in the other Nordic countries. And uh, for the last 14 years, we have offering digital solutions into the food safety area. Um, uh, to help the kitchens uh, comply uh, to uh, to the rules and legislations on that area. 
Um, but uh, for four years ago, uh, we turned uh, into a food uh, waste uh, area as well, <laughs> uh, because um, we really believe, and now we really know, that every kitchen has a potential in relation to reduce food waste. And um, I, as uh, Ben just said, uh, we operate in the food service sector, and it means uh, the private and public sector, and it means also the Hureka, uh, but also in, uh, in uh, restaurants and canteens and uh, all the public kitchens as well. And uh, as I said, we really believe that all kitchen has a potential, uh, but we also know that we have to help the kitchen to know their potential. Uh, because we really know now that um, it's about to, uh, to offer a measurement uh, to uh, the, the kitchen so they know if they have food waste, uh, what it is and why they have the food waste and, and uh, what it is about. Um, and that is uh, why we created this concept, Food Waste for All, uh, because we, uh, we really believe that if, it's, if uh, we should, uh, could uh, motivate uh, this sector, uh, then uh, the measurement has to be relevant and it has to be simple and it has to create value into uh, inside the kitchen, but also outside the kitchen. Uh, so uh, we really want to help this sector and we really want to help them with uh, measuring the food waste so they know their food waste. Uh, so by measuring, they can uh, have uh, insights and they can have knowledge about uh, how they perform in the internal venue chain. That is uh, what it is about. So we really want to, uh, to work uh, digital and we want to work smart and simple and we really want to create a, a value uh, and we really want to focus on uh, preventing food waste, very important, and to reduce, of course, but also about uh, the retention uh, uh, perspective because it's not about just to, uh, to, to reach the targets, it's also about to, uh, to, uh, to, to stay there, if you can say so. So... Um, the question is actually similar uh, and it's the same for all our customers, because uh, what kind of initiative uh, have the greatest impact packed in our kitchen or in our uh, company and how do we get started? That is actually the, the huge and the big uh, pain and question for, for everybody. Um, but actually, um, the question is the same, but that's uh, not uh, the case with the answers, with the answers, because we have to look into the company and into the kitchens about what is relevant uh, for them, because uh, it's a it's very busy uh, job to be in a kitchen. Uh, so it's about how much time do we have during the day to to do the measurement, but it's also how much time do we have in the company to work with the data. And about the knowledge, it's also very important to see uh, what is the level of knowledge in the specific company. Uh, because if you have like high level of professional uh, employee, uh, then you can maybe be more ambitious. But if not, that's not the case, then you have to be uh, yeah, not that uh, ambition about how to, to measure your food waste. And also what kind of resources do you actually want to focus on? Uh, we got the triple bottle line, you know that already, we have talked about that already. So would you like to, uh, to, to uh, look at the money uh, economy perspective or is it a climate perspective or is it like the people perspective? Because work environmental issue here is very important as well. So that is like the triple bottle line that we have to, uh, to talk to the company about. Uh, but it's about the, the, the food waste the concept that we have uh, created is like not, uh, it's because we can see that it's not like one size fits all. It's about to see uh, what, what is my position here uh, on the, in the landscape. So we have like four levels that we can offer uh, in the food service sector. And the start level is uh, to measuring the collect all your total amount of food waste. Uh, uh, but it is to uh, to start your awareness and reflect about okay could I have, could have could I have avoid this uh, amount of food waste or not? So it's it's a very simple measurement and it's a very simple activity on the start level. Uh, but and then we believe as soon as you know okay I do actually have some food waste. Uh, then you are getting curious and you are getting like, uh, you want to know why. So the next level, then you can actually measure your reason. Why do I have this food waste? Um, and uh, you can also put guests into the system so you can see, okay, the total amount of food waste, but also uh, waste per guest. And that is a very important number uh, to work with in this uh, sector. 
And then uh, you want to know more, and then you can go to the next level, and that is what we call advanced, uh, because then you can actually actually measuring into uh, four uh, main areas, uh, uh, which reflect the internal uh, value chain. Uh, so you know where uh, does my food waste come from, uh, so what uh, do I need to do about it? And then you can go like 100% with our, uh, 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 which include uh, also our hardware. Uh, so uh, you can just uh, be 100% uh, on the solution. Um, so uh, on top of that, we have this enterprise because a lot of our customers are large accounts. So it means that they have uh, maybe 50, 100, and 200 uh, uh, units. So of course, they want to, uh, to be able to manage uh, their company. So they have to know, OK, what is actually the case in the specific kitchen, uh, but also total-wise, uh, what is the total amount of uh, food waste, and also average uh, uh, food waste per guest. Um, so um, we work in that way that uh, we uh, we want to give uh, the first level baseline for free because we uh, we want to really to create uh, this uh, baseline together with the company so they know if they have food waste because as you say there's a lot of uh, these people here they really don't think that they have they don't believe that they have food waste so uh, by uh, offering them this baseline then we can discuss on a more qualified uh, basic uh, so they know okay we have actually a potential and then they will are uh, motivating uh, by uh, raising their ambitions. Uh, so it's very easy to start your journey uh, with uh, download the app, and I brought it for you today. We can talk about that later, but you can uh, use that app for free for, for 90 days, so you can uh, see if I do I have a potential uh, or no. Um, and I know the answer, but you can just try. <laughs> um, and our experience so far, we have, as I told you, a lot of private private and public customer reducing food waste together with us. And we have like a hotel chain and canteen chains and restaurants and public sector as well. And by giving them this insight and knowledge about where do I have my food waste and what is it that is like in the food waste amount, then we can see it makes, we create a lot of value because we can see that they reduce up to 50% of their baseline. So uh, it really means something to have data and to know what are we talking about in my company or in my kitchen. So um, yeah, that was uh, the input and the inspiration for me. Thank you very much, Mette. Um, before opening for uh, the floor for question, um, I, I uh, would say that uh, I recommend we proceed to Morten that is coming right after, and we will then take the discussion combined. Um, I know that um, Morten uh, or Morten should be online, um, and uh, he will be presenting um, his um, um, solutions um, from GS1 and GS1 is a Danish company and Morten he is COO and head of retail. Um, I don't know if you can hear me Morten. I can hear you, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Great. So Morten, uh, the floor is yours uh, to present uh, your perspective on today's agenda. Thank you. Um, my name is Morten. I'm uh, from GS1 Denmark. I'm the CEO and head of retail in Denmark. Um, we are part of a big organization called GS1, which are mainly known as the, the barcode people, so to say. We are the company who administrates the, and, um, and, and sell the barcode numbers. So we know a lot about how to identify and, 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 and how to keep data regarding to, to items. In Denmark, we are close to 12,000 members. Uh, in, in general, in, in the world, we have 115 countries as a members uh, and over 2 million member, member companies. We are neutral. We are not for profit. And in Denmark, we are owned by uh, the industry behind the, the, the supermarket chains and uh, the, the daily shops. So could you change the next slide, please? So what Bent actually talked about earlier is that that the normal barcode that you see today, uh, which is like a fence, is uh, is not a smart barcode. It has it's a, it only has a number. 
so you can use it as a key. So if you have like a system, then you can use the number to unlock more information about this. But GS1 also holds other kinds of ways to identify and um, to communicate uh, codes like these GS1 uh, data matrix and GS1 QR codes. These actually holds up to 3000 characters. So you can have all kinds of information. And, and what we have experienced and what we have actually here in the Nordic countries uh, pilot on is to just keep it small and simple to actually do the do these codes with only production number, which is the GTIN, like the normal barcode that you have. Then you also have the expiration date and you also have the batch and the or the lot number. These are actually uh, enough to, to fulfill a whole lot of, uh, of, of good things. So if, if you push the next key, please. And yeah, so which uh, with, with, with these um, free ads and free informations, you could actually stop sales, which have the already uh, of goods that is already expired. You could automatically discount uh, near expiration dates. So for example, if you have an item which uh, are expiring tomorrow, you can automatically give a discount on this item because you have the, the expiration date and the, 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 the scanner knows this. You have the traceability on batch number, which is, um, is really, really good for enabling recalls. And of course, you can do live inventory management. For example, you normally you know you how much milk you have in the supermarket, but you don't know when it's going to expire. So this is something, some information that you can share within your, your own systems. Uh, and of course, this is also value for the suppliers to know this information. Uh, in, in Denmark, we have um, uh, scan yourself where you use your, 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 your phone. So when you do the, the, when you go down to the supermarket and you do your grocery, you can actually use your phone to do the, the grocery. And then already there, the supermarket knows who you are and what you buy. So if you also use this code, the, the phone could actually warn you about saying, you know, this item that you buy now, you should use before tomorrow because then the expiration date is today. Uh, and it could also give you a discount. And it could also tell you that to last, uh, last uh, Monday, you bought this item. If you haven't already uh, gotten rid of it or, or process it, you should uh, throw it out because it's, uh, it's recalled. Uh, so there's all kinds of information that you can also use to actually enhance the customer, customer satisfaction and trust both for the, for, um, the supplier and also for the supermarket. Next slide, yes. Uh, in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Finland, we did a pilot with um, a supermarket chain where we identified 14 products and did a pilot on saying, if we could have this 2D barcode on these 14 items, we, uh, we would like to see how, the, the, how it, we could decrease the number of items being thrown out. And we actually decreased it with 18% only for these 14 uh, products. Um, and there was, there, was, there was something that we could go back to our supermarket chains here in Denmark and Sweden, of course. And this was in Norway, just to be, be precise here. We, we went back to Denmark and in Denmark, we, we had the, the discussions with the supermarket chains and they find this very, very interesting. So we are also now in considering pilots with Danish supermarkets uh, and we're getting closer for, for each day. Next slide, please. We also, not, not only did we did do, do a pilot in Australia, they also did a pilot with uh, Haworth and, um, and they actually had similar numbers and they calculated that, that there will be a return of investment for less than three years if they could actually um, scale this out on all their meat products. And you can see here, uh, they actually also embedded the, the weight and the price in the code you can have so much information in this code and actually it's it's um it's it's it holds more information than like a pallet labels for example 
So you, you can embed all kinds of information. Next slide, please. Yeah, so just to, uh, to clarify, a supplier should embed this barcode on the, um, the item. And of course, this information goes um, also on the, the, the page and also on the pallet. And actually the retailer, when they uh, receive these items, they can take it into their systems, but they can actually also just keep it um, without the system. That depends on how they would like to control their inventory. Um, and then next, you know, on the, the scanning in the, the supermarket, either if you use the phone or use the scanning, the information here is, is kept and is used to either inform the, the supplier, the, um, the customer or to, to guide the customer on this is actually something that is, uh, is, is running on expiration dates or this is something that, you know, you can get a discount on. There are all kinds of information that you can actually use. And if you're also into to, uh, so some of these uh, very intelligent uh, refrigerators, this is also information that could be read by them. Yeah. Of course, yeah, you also have this, uh, this uh, recall, as I told you earlier, that you can actually do because a lot of the supermarket chains have loyalty programs. So a lot of the, the, the consumers uh, are signing up to get information. And of course, this is also something, some information that they would like to have. Yeah, and the potential here is also if, if, if we see that, that this is something that you can process and co uh, exist with all kinds of informations. Like this is when when you embed the the barcode, you could also do some information saying that that if this pro, um, this product has been been put into freeze, it can tell you how long for before it goes bad. It could also give you recipes um, combined with other things that you have in refrigerators or you have bought, saying you know you have these items which are close to uh, to expire. Maybe you should do this. Uh, it could also give you an information about, you know, this is, has always been used. Maybe you should put it on your shopping list. Um, you could also combine it with, with um, in Denmark, we have this Concito uh, think tank, uh, which um, uh, has calculated CO2 footprints on items. So you could also combine it with this. Uh, and of course, there's the recall. It's, it's actually a really, really simple thing. It's uh, the, the big uh, issue here is that, that normally when you print um, on products, you can have a label and that is pretty much it. But then when you print uh, either these data matrix or the, um, yeah, the 2D barcodes, you need to embed live data, of course, like the expiration date, like the lot or the batch number. And that's a bit of a cost but it's, it's lower each day as we see. So, so this in, in counts on what it actually achieves, it should be a good investment. Yeah. Thank you very much, Morten, for uh, this presentation on, uh, on the exotic name barcode. Um, <laughs> uh, I will, um, we have, two minutes uh, where I will open the floor uh, if somebody wants to uh, pose a question uh, either to Morten or to Mette or to Bent. Now is uh, the time. Yes. Morten for the presentation. Uh, I represent retail, Japka. We have 8,000 stores. And in fact, we have adopted G JS1 code on our private brands. And uh, we invested heavily a few years ago behind this technology. We changed all the scanners in the stores. And uh, we also uh, use these GS1 codes for uh, traceability, for automatic discount, uh, and you know, uh, preventing food waste, obviously. However, my question is how to convince the industry to really adopt this standard, as I did it for private brands. But I uh, cannot, you know, overcome the, the issues. And you know, talking with producers, it is not something that they are easily to be convinced. Huh? Morten, how, how have you made it in Denmark to to made it uh, as a standard? Hmm, that's a good question. We 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 uh, we actually experienced the same issue as you say. 
that we, we see the supermarket chains are mostly keen on starting with their own brands because they control these. And, and slowly we start to see the interest of the, the, the bigger suppliers because of course this is this is uh, this come with, with an extra cost. But the biggest supplier in Denmark, for example, we have a dairy product um, producer, Arla, uh, who also wishes to be best in class. So this is this is also something from their strategy to be able to reduce um, their, their CO2 footprint, their food waste. So if you talk into their agenda on this item, they see that this is maybe not... Um, it's an investment, but it's an, 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 a necessary investment. But it's not an easy task. We have had a lot of meetings, and we also have meetings with the government in, in Denmark to, to do some small push to get them motivated for this. But it's not an easy task. Thank you. Maybe the subject for the regulatory, for the government? <laughs> Thank you. I have data and then some simple things like your course it's happening it's happening in our industry now more and more customers see QR codes or barcodes being engraved on a pump but then we have uh, millions of assets uh, like staying in a plant level all around the globe and this these assets are silent so a simple QR code stick should be so it's happening it takes time at scale I yeah, but but I will. Um, we are uh, within a program um, also in uh, Copenhagen. I hope we can continue the discussions uh, in the third half um, because I will, uh, which is uh, according to some the most important half. Um, I will um, say thank you for um, today's discussions that we will progress and proceed on. Um, I hope that our first step has been uh, uh, an inspiring step for further collaboration and partnership. Uh, I believe that is uh, a good opportunity for, to, opportunity for that. Before saying goodbye to those who are online, um, I would like um, to say stay tuned because there will be uh, another session, a dialogue session called The Many Phases of Reducing Food Loss and Food Waste, hosted by the Danish think tank One Third, and it is opened by the Danish Minister uh, for Food, Agriculture and Fishery, Rasmus Prehn. So, uh, and with that in mind, I think we are one o'clock to finish. So thank you very much for, uh, for the so far. But that does not mean that we cannot continue discussing. Uh,